Growing up in Taos was quite interesting. I was born in the 70s, 75, so there was a lot going on in Taos at that time. It was a pretty booming art community. It was definitely the Wild West. I grew up with two very free-spirited parents that really exposed me to a lot of different things. There was a group called the um, Taos Institute of Arts that would do these week-long intensive courses. Phil Poirier was teaching one of these courses and I got a scholarship to do a week with him. And first day in, it, I was just blown away and completely taken by all of it, his expertise and his skills. And so by about the third day in, I built up the courage to ask if I could work with him. I just had this epiphany at that moment, like if I'm gonna do this and if I'm gonna take this anywhere, this is the guy that I need to be with, that I need to work with. And I really felt like I needed to do something that was really hands-on. Over some time, he, you know, he was really encouraging and he would give me like one day a week, he'd say, okay, go up into my library, I have this amazing library of books, stacks of books, and he's like, go through the, the books, get inspired, start sitting down and sketching and drawing. And so then whatever I would sketch, then he would help me figure out how to actually make it. So then I started making some of my own pieces and wearing them to, to work at Lambert's, this restaurant that I worked at at the time. Shortly after I started having people buy my pieces right off of me at work, I apprenticed with him for about 15 years. Indian Market was the first market that I did, nine months pregnant, had my son what, two weeks after. It was hugely successful and I realized I don't have to go back to waitressing anymore. I can just do this full time. And then I think we got invited to Native Treasures that next spring. It was great because it was up on Museum Hill at the time. It really has become like family to us in a lot of ways. We really love doing Native Treasures because it's such a scaled down version of all the rest of the shows. It's really a lot more intimate. We just have a really wonderful client base that we've established and also artists that have also become wonderful friends. It's really nice to do something, also a show that you know that the money's gonna go towards the museum and educating people about Native American art. So that part of it makes it feel really meaningful. Jane Buxbaum called me up and um, wanted to take me to lunch. And I said, well, my son and I will be in Santa Fe. Let's meet up. So they took us to lunch, and it was uh, with my son, uh, which was really sweet that he was there with me. And I was told that I was the 2018 living treasure. I didn't really even know how to respond because it was such an overwhelming honor. I feel like I'm very accomplished and skilled in what I've done, and so it feels really nice to have the recognition. But it's also really humbling because I feel like there's so much more that I could do and like I'm just still kind of scratching the surface. So to get the award, it's extremely exciting, but also so humbling. And it's given me a lot of time to sort of reflect on my life and, and how I got to this point in my career. And it's really nice to, to have the recognition of all the hard work. It's really an honor because of the caliber of art that is out there at, at Native Treasure specifically, but in the Native American art world, it's really exciting to be on the forefront of all of that and to be able to participate and be on the cutting edge of, of what's happening um, in the Native art world right now.